All right, so welcome to night hacking interviews at the Java One LED conference. Um, my name's Steven Chin. You can watch the interviews live on the internet. We're live streaming at nighthacking.com. And I am joined by Bruno Sozo, Edson Yanaga, and we are going to chat a little bit about Java and DevOps. Um, so this is also the theme of the presentation you guys are, are giving. Yes. And tell me, tell me a little bit about why you picked this topic. So I think that uh, one of the most important uh, features for a developer is a developer needs uh, to deliver software, right? You know, uh, we've, for, for too long, we have been creating this idea that uh, we developer, we, we, we write code that sits uh, you know, uh, on, on a repository somewhere, and then eventually when the production guys decide, or when the marketing guys decide, it's, eventually it's gonna be delivered to users. But really, what we do as developers, we deliver software, right? That should be our main goal. So I think DevOps is, is um, the, the strategy and the, the, the set of ideas they're helping developers to take this responsibility of actually putting software in the hands of end users. And I think this is extremely important for us developers because it, it recreates back our main purpose that is you know, create cool stuff that users will actually use. Okay, so we actually can release software that people will use in production. Right, exactly. Okay, what are some of the, you were gonna say something, Edson? Yes. Yeah, I'd like to say that we've been talking and using DevOps for the past like two or three years. And uh, deployment software in production has always been so painful, so that people usually try to avoid what makes them feel pain. And what I think what DevOps also brings to the table is that we now have uh, techniques and the willing of people to help uh, avoid this pain. So we can uh, release faster and put software in production so nobody, uh, nobody else has to spend the nights uh, all, all night long uh, trying to fix bugs and uh, correct uh, uh, server problems and issues just to release the software without pain. Okay, so it makes developers' lives less painful. Yes. Dealing with production issues well, and maintenance patches. Well, I would say more patches. enjoyable. More, enjo you know, more, more enjoyable. More enjoyable. <laughs> right. <laughs> the families also, they like DevOps because they don't have to, to spend the whole okay. weekend uh, yeah, fixing Yeah, so it frees up evenings mm -hmm. and weekends and more, more time at the park. Right, yes. Or the geek bike ride. Oh, right, 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 yes, how about that? So um, what technologies do you guys use specifically for getting things from the repository into production? Right, so it's, it's, a, it's a set of things, but I think that's one of the main technologies that developers can learn now uh, that they can use is virtualization in general, right? So uh, once, you, once you virtualize things, it's a lot easier to recreate environments, to create your development environments, a lot of, a lot of easy, uh, much easier to recreate like test environments that you can, that you can use. Um, it's a lot easier to prepare your production environment also. So out, uh, the, the, the top of the virtualization uh, technology is what we call cloud computing, right? But it's yeah. this whole process of virtualization uh, from virtualizing environments in your laptop to you know, all the way to, to virtualizing even um, platform as a service environment in cloud, uh, you know, by w when we abstract uh, the hardware and we, we allow um, uh, software to drive, the whole, to drive the whole process, then it means that we can actually automate a lot more of what we're doing. So, so I, think, I think that's the base of all this discussion today has been a lot of virtualization. Yeah, just like Bruno said, with virtualization, now we have automation. So you can, you can use DevOps with, 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 with virtualization using tools for automation. You can automate anything with any tools you like. You can use a shell script to do to, to DevOps. You can also use um, a more advanced technologies. Uh, these days we talk about, uh, a lot about uh, containers and Docker, but you don't have to use Docker to do DevOps. You can use shell scripts with an automation tool with a continuous integration server just to put some pipeline with, that with a button you can release your to the next stage of your software development process. Okay. Yeah, so, so the whole objective is that is that we can create this automated pipeline with a series of steps that we, we that, that in each step increases our trust in the software in the process, because the whole thing is that 
you know, it's like driving a car, right? So, you know, when you start learning, you're driving really slow because you're afraid of things and everything. But as, as more, as the faster you, 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 you want to go, the more you, know, you, you need to, to trust, right? To trust the car, to trust the roads, right? And that's the same thing. So we want to uh, create a whole automated process that you can trust very well so you can accelerate and do, and do more. Okay, so it, for folks who are getting started with automating some of their back-end processes, mm -hmm. what, what's a good way to get started? How would people kick off a DevOps initiative in their company? Uh, that's a very interesting question because in our session that we present tomorrow, <laughs> that's, exactly <laughs> that's exactly the things we're going to talk about. Right. Uh, some simple steps that you can do to start DevOps in your team today. Okay, yes. so you're not gonna you're not gonna let out the secret sauce yet. Oh, we're saving we can, that for no, tomorrow. <laughs> we can we can tell yeah we can we can tell a, a few things right. You know I think that's that's uh, uh, we we have a, we have lots of different things that you can do, but uh, I we think that if you start by uh, automating how you deploy your application, for example, that's a, that's already a good start, right? Yeah. You know just just uh, just by Automate, right now a lot of people still, are still doing deploying by hand, right? And they're still kind of copying war files to somewhere. And, and I think that once you do this, do this by hand one time, figure out exactly all these steps that you need to take, right? And then write a little script and automate this little part, right? So I think that every time you automate a little, thi a little thing, you're getting closer to DevOps. And a lot of things, a lot of times when, when you talk about DevOps, people think that, oh yeah, DevOps is a changing culture. And really, culture is really hard to change. So I think we can do those small steps that we actually make it possible for us to show how, how, how this can be done. And then eventually the culture is going to change. We don't need to start by changing the culture. Yeah, we can tell our team, oh, tomorrow we're going to be doing DevOps. Yeah? We, should do, we should do and choose some very small steps because when you, uh, we know that deploying the uh, DevOps process, it's a very long road. Uh? But we also know that in every long road, uh, we can start with very small steps just to increase confidence. We can choose very, uh, very the pain points of our software deployment process. And we can try to automate the simple, simple pain points just to increase our confidence so that we can have even more confidence to automate even more. OK, yeah. so do either of you guys have examples from your professional work where you've gone from a culture which wasn't DevOps and then what the changes were once you automated and got more DevOps in your company. Can you think of an example from some project you've worked on about the benefits? Yeah, the one, one interesting thing is that uh, when you talk about DevOps and all this discussion about culture, both me and Edson, we are consultants, right? Yeah. So we do this all the time. So, <laughs> so basically, and, and it's funny because when you, when you get your, to, to a consulting job, you, you don't have any, you can't change anything inside the company, right? It's very, it, 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 you, you're, all the, uh, how, how can you, an outside person, change the culture of a company? It can't happen, right? The culture is something that happens inside. And so basically, what we try to do is like get small steps that can be done, right? So first of all, you know, automate uh, the, the, the deployment of the application in the test environment or in the development environment. Automate the creation of the development environment inside the, 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 the developer uh, uh, laptop, for example. So that's the kind of things we have to do. And, and, and I think, you know, we've, we've done this in, in dozens of different companies. Um, and sometimes uh, you get to a company, for example, and just by uh, configuring the right way the, the uh, code repository and defining, you know, how commits are done, it's already a big step, right? Okay, all right. So since you guys do lots of companies, no, no names. No names, yes. No, no companies. Names, no companies, right. What was the worst situation you walked into from like an anti-agile DevOps culture? Okay, I have one that's pretty <laughs> recent, right? Okay. That I've, I've been talking about this in my talks. And, that's, and, and that shows the frustration. You know, I, got, I was visiting a company uh, a few weeks ago, and those guys had an amazing product, right? They demo some, you know, something that I need to use you know, for, for, for things that I do. Yeah. And they were demoing this amazing product. It was great. I was like, man, this is amazing. And I was like, you know, I, I've seen other people doing this in the U.S. And what they're doing is not half of what you guys are doing. You, you just had a great product. How do I use it? And it's like, oh, that's the next version. 
You know, <laughs> it's not available yet. I'm like, what are you talking about? So, you know, because we're, we are several months here trying to make sure that's going to work and and, and so, so, you know, they have this amazing product that lots of users want and, lo and would love and they can't deliver it because it's sitting on their repository and you know, I think I think that's the, that's that's what frustrating for me, right? When yeah. when you know that so many great code, so many features, so many functionalities, so many bugs are solved inside repositories, and, and they're not being you used. Just can't, users can't access it. it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, the, the worst scenario I faced it, it was like a two years ago. We have a, a I went to a company that had a deployment process which took a month. So to release each version, it, they took ad, about uh, two full-time developers a whole month to release a version. So they, when they finished it, they already had another version to deploy. So the schedule was always one month late. Yeah. So when I started in this company, we took about uh, six months to create a software pipeline, to change the whole process, to, to, to start doing DevOps, so that now this company can do like three or four releases per day. With zero downtime, so you know it's like a uh, it seems like a huge amount of time, six months, but it's, it's such an amazing thing that you can accomplish once you, you once you've been there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. no, so that's a good I, yeah. Yeah, I have I have. Can can I tell one more really bad? We we like stories, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah stories story. are always good. So <laughs> that has been a, a few years past, and uh, we were in this very large project, lots and lots of developers, and um, uh, I was called in because. You know, they said that they had a huge problem with deployment. You know, deploying the application was was taking too long, and the team was not good enough, and yeah. everything. So I got in this meeting, and the guy said, uh, th "There's two guys responsible for deploying the application, right?" They said, "Oh no, it's all solved now. We automated." And I said, "Okay, that's good." And then the person that called me is like, "Come on, Bruno, it's it's you, you can't say it's good." I said, "Well, they said it's they automated, so I'll sit down with them later." But it doesn't you know, in the meeting doesn't. So I sat down with them. And they had um, 56 manual steps to deploy the application to application server. <laughs> 56. And they had just automated four, right? <laughs> so they now only had 52 manual steps to deploy the application. The funny thing is that, the, I mean, the worst thing, I guess, is that uh, they were not developers, right? Yeah. And uh, the developers were putting source code into the repository that didn't, did not compile. <laughs> so those guys received all those bunch of source code that did not compile, and they had to deploy the application server to test it because the developers didn't have a test environment, right? So, <laughs> so what did they do? They were not developers, so they would comment the lines that didn't compile, right? And try to compile again. And once that didn't work, they would comment more lines until we <laughs> finally compile, right? And then they would deploy the application. Of course, nothing worked, right? <laughs> so and, and, and all of, in, in all this time, the developers are saying, we finished the source code, it's a deployment problem, <laughs> right? And, and really, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of the crazy thing, right? We developers, we have to assume the responsibility that unless our code is running, being used by an end user, it's not done, right? Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's good advice. Okay, so in conclusion, is there anything you would like to recommend to the viewers online or the folks sitting here as kind of a call to action on things they should try in their company? So first of all, there's a lot of very, very cool open source applications out there that you can use immediately on your project. So you don't have to, you don't have to, to uh, buy a huge license or change uh, a lot of the things you're doing. You can, you can start using uh, some very cool uh, open source applications that will help you immediately. And I think, you know, and by using those, those, those open source tools, you can do like little steps uh, to improve things. Yeah. I'd like to, to say uh, a single call to action in one phrase. To do DevOps, you have to virtualize, you have to automate, you have to monitor, you have to measure, and you have to test. If you can do these five single steps, uh, you will become much more uh, closer to what DevOps is. <laughs> right. And that's, okay. that's our talk. OK, so, so you well, don't have to come to our talk anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, sh I'm sure that there's a lot more detail and interesting stuff in the talk. All right, so and thanks. So, last thing, DevOps is we together, development and operations, delivering, sort, uh, code, um, delivering software to our end users. I think we all have to understand that. We together delivering software. Cool. All right, so round of applause for these guys. Thank you very much for a great interview. Thanks a lot, Steve. 
Um, so we're also going to be doing additional interviews all day today. So myself, Pablo, Yolan will be interviewing other folks. Some of the talks will be in English. Some will be in Portuguese. I hope you will join us for our additional interviews. And you can also tell your friends to watch on the live stream at nighthacking.com. So thank you. Thank you.